2019. Can you believe that? Nope. 2019. Uh, time goes by quickly, doesn't it? Yes. Mickey Mantle one time said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I'd try to live a better life than I did. But time, it's hard to believe that it's going to be 2019 in just a couple of days. What's the new year going to be like for you? Have you thought about it? What do you want for the new year? Well, God... If you're a Christian, God is either going to shower you with his blessings or pour out a curse on you in 2019. It's your choice. Whether you get his blessings or not his blessings, it's your choice. 2019, whether your home is going to be a peaceful home or a troubled home, it's your choice. You're going to decide. 2019, whether your life will have joy and peace and happiness, or whether your life is going to have turmoil and unhappiness and misery, it's your choice. 2019, either your children will love you, and love God and serve God and obey God, or they won't. Parents, it's really your choice what happens to your children if they're still at home in 2019. In our text, Moses is 120 years old. And he looks back over his life. And he brings the final message that God has given him for God's people. In verse number 15 of Deuteronomy chapter 13, this is the message that Moses delivers. His last sermon, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. He says... I'm setting before you a choice today. It's going to be up to you what happens to you in the future. And let me say to you that are Christians today, what 2019 brings for you is really going to be up to you. If you want God's blessings, then there's certain things that you've got to do. If you don't want his blessings, then you just ignore what he tells you to do. Moses knew that man was governed by two things. Man's nature may not have changed. Uh, man's nature doesn't change. There's certain circumstances that change. But every man is governed by two things. They can be described in those two words. One is hope and one is fear. Hope and fear. We're hoping that we will have a good year next year. I know a lot of people that have had a rough year in 2018, and they're hoping for something better. But also, many of us fear if we don't do certain things that it's not going to be very good. And so man is governed by hope and fears. Moses says, I'm appealing to you using those two things. He says, if you hope for blessings and happiness, then I'm going to tell you how to do it. But he says also, if you fear God's cursing, if you fear God, if you fear misery, then there's certain things you've got to do. For whatever reason, Moses says, I'm going to encourage you to love God and serve God and obey God. Verse number 17 says... Well, verse 16, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. If you want his blessings, love God, walk in his ways, keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Verse number 17, we read, But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou goest over Jordan to possess it. Moses says, if your heart turns away, 
You're facing a new year. If you want God's blessings, then there's certain things you've got to do. But if your heart is turned away so that you'll not listen to the Word of God, you're drawn away and you desert serving God, and you start worshiping other gods, it's going to result in ruin. But it's your choice. You know, God has always given man a choice. God is not, doesn't make anybody get saved. God has given us all a will. But He doesn't control that will. You do. Now, He may make circumstances such in our life that will help influence that will. But God does not cause anybody to get saved or not to get saved. He gives us a will. Many of you remember the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And God blessed them. And they had sweet fellowship one with the other. But there in the Garden of Eden, God gave man a choice that day when they were there. God told Adam, you know, you could have fellowship with me, but there's one thing that I don't want you to do. And he created him and he said, I hope that you choose to obey me. I hope you choose not to. If you will obey me, you'll have paradise forever. If you don't, there's going to be death for certain, but it's your choice. And let me just simply say this. God's given every one of us a choice. Young people, how, how many we have in here that are, that's, let's say you're 35 or less. Raise your hand just a minute. You're 35. I want you to stand up just a minute. You look like you're about to fall asleep. And uh, that'll, you're 35 or less. Listen to me. I want to speak to you just for a minute. By the way, good to see Miss Palmer back there today. Glad she's with us, visiting her grandparents. You may be seated. You've got a choice in 2019. You've got a choice how you're going to live. You've got a choice whether you want your life to be productive or not. You've got a choice. There's certain God, things that God says don't do. It's your choice. Now, those of you that are younger, especially those of you that are teenagers, you've got a choice whether you're going to remain clean and pure or not. Whether you're going to participate in premarital sex or not. I know we live in an age today where many people ignore it, but God's word is not changed. God says that it's an abomination. Amen. God says it's wrong. And believe me, if you don't obey God's word, there'll be things down the future that there'll be punishment for it. But you've got a choice that you make. Some of you young people, listen to me, you've got a choice. We live in an age today where if you turn television on, and it's something we invite people into our homes by television and they teach our kids that it's all right to drink beer and wine and whiskey and, and in fact you'll be a beautiful person if you do that. We invite them in and they spend millions of dollars to try to convince our young people especially that it's all right to participate in it. And you've got a choice. You young people you've got a choice whether you can go along with the crowd and, and get to drink and, and have parties with it but believe me there will be a price to pay for it later on but it's your choice your parents listen your parents can't control you when you get out I know they'd like to but if you get out by yourself they can't control you it's your choice what you do this next year whether you live right abstain and don't or, or don't do right it's really up to you and it's your choice about your spiritual life no, we do everything we can to encourage you to read the Bible and pray and teach you how to rightly divide the Word. We try to make it interesting to you. We do our very best to help you with that. But it's your choice whether or not you're going to read the Bible. We can't make you. Nobody can do it. It's your choice. But what kind of life you have in 2019, young people, it's up to you. And you adults, it's your choice. Whether you're faithful to church, whether you're faithful in your daily Christian life, whether you're day faithful in the way that you live. You know, one of the bad things about uh, our many people's testimony is we're one thing on Sunday and we're something else during the week. We're one thing at church, but we're something else at work. I wonder if the people where you work know that you're a Christian. Do they know that you love the Lord and live for the Lord? Do they know it? But it's your choice 
what kind of influence you're going to have on others. Whether you'll be faithful in your Christian walk with the Lord daily. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Your daily necessities. It's your choice. Do you want, wouldn't it be wonderful to go into 2019, now don't miss this, wouldn't it be wonderful to go into the new year and not have to worry at all about the basic necessities of life? Amen. Amen. About a place to live and food to eat and clothes to wear? It's your choice. You can, you can have your basic needs taken care of. How do you do it? By putting the Lord first place in your life. Seek ye first. Put him first place and he's made a promise that your basic needs will be taken care of. But it's your choice. Whether you want to go into 2019 and, and have to struggle and not have your basic needs taken care of or whether you want to be assured they're taken care of. Adults, it's, it's your choice. We could read in the book of Malachi and we looked some there Wednesday night and he tells us about tithing. Now I know people don't like to hear about tithing, but there's a lot in the Bible about finances. Amen. And I found out from pastoring as many years that I have, that the people that honor the Lord by paying their tithes receive a blessing from God. And if you look in the book of Malachi, not a long chapter, God says that people have robbed him by not paying their tithe. That's what he said. I didn't. God said that they've robbed him. You say, well, that was just for the Jews people. Oh no, the tithe was, in, uh, was instituted before the law was. It was endorsed during the law and the Lord Jesus commended the tithe. It's a basic principle. Tithing recognizes when you tithe, you recognize who the Lord of your life is. But he promises you that if you'll tithe he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you'll not be able to contain it. Now if that's not true then why do we want to read the Bible? Why do we want to serve God? But we know it is true. And many in here and many multitudes of Christians could give testimony. God honors that. But adults, it's your choice. Whether or not you want to have your needs met, that's your choice. You put him first place. Whether or not you want to have the windows of heaven open and blessing, it's your choice. Many make wrong decisions. They say, well, should I do this or not? They make wrong decisions. You know why, you know why some people that are Christians don't put God first place? And you know why some that are Christians don't tithe regularly? It's either because they don't believe the promise that God's made. If you believed it, you would do it. If you really believe that God would honor you and pour out a blessing that you won't be able to contain, if you really believe that the 90% you had less would go further than the 100%, you would do it. So people don't tithe because they don't believe it. Or they don't like the terms that are required or proposed. They want God's blessings, but they don't want to do what God says to do. They want their needs met, but they don't want to put the Lord first place in their life. Now let me quickly say, my time's getting away. Number one, God has given us the freedom to choose our own destiny. Our own destiny... It's up to us. God's given us that freedom. Elijah, one time in 1 Kings chapter 18, he looked at the people of God and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. And I know many preachers have stood and would like to just say to people, Hey, why don't you quit playing church? Make a decision who you're going to serve. Are you going to live for God or not? If you're going to live for God, then live for him. If you're not, then go ahead and live for the devil. And that's what Elijah stood up. He says, you're, dis you're, you're, you're back and forth between two decisions right here. But make your mind up who you're going to serve. Joshua, in the 24th chapter of Joshua said, Choose you this day whom you'll serve. Make a choice. Who are you going to serve? Choose this day who you're going to serve. And I say to families in here today, make a decision who you're going to serve. You know, those of you that have children at home, what an opportunity that you have, a blessed opportunity you have to bring your children upright. And God has given us basic instructions on how we can have a Christian home. He says, husbands, love your wives. Yes. 
Wives, submit to your husbands, and children, obey your parents in the Lord. That's simple. That's God's plan, and he'll bless the home that does that. Husbands, love your wives. Be good to them. Take care of them. Wives, submit to the authority of your husband. If you've got a good Christian husband, you ought to thank God for him, because many women don't. But if you've got a good Christian husband, thank God for him, and support him, and encourage him. And children, you're to obey the Lord. But guess what? Children don't want to obey the Lord. Not did your kids always want to obey you? When I was a kid, I didn't always want to obey my parents, but guess what? They made me obey them. That's right. And so if children are commanded to obey their parents, then parents, your job is to make them obey you. There ought to be consequences for them Amen. not doing right. Amen. You know how many times, you know the way it is in many homes? Now, probably not in your home, but uh, Johnny, get up. Uh, Ten minutes later, Johnny, get up! <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, get up! <laughs> Johnny, if you don't get up, I'm going to spank you. <laughs> That's what happens often today, isn't it? Yes. But parents, your job, is when you tell them to get up, make them get up. <laughs> Throw a cup of cold water on their face. Right. <laughs> make them get up. You want to have a wonderful Christian home this year? It's up to you, parents. It's your choice. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, obey your... Uh, husbands, love your wives. Wives, obey your husbands. And children, obey your parents. And parents, make them obey you. And you can have a peaceful home in your life. Church members, it's your choice. Whether you want God's blessings or not, it's up to you. So God's given us the freedom to choose our own destinies. What kind of home you have, it's up to you. Number two, we must live with the consequences of our choices. Right. We can trust in the Lord or not. Come on, let's be seated. Right. We've got to live with the consequences of our choices. Some of you in here have never been saved. You've never trusted in the Lord. And you're, you, you, it's just sort of a game to you. You come to church because you think you have to come. But my friends, you've got a choice whether you want to go to heaven when you die or go to hell when you die. Yes. You've got a choice whether you want to have peace in this life or not peace in this life. It's your choice, your destiny that you make. But you're going to have to live with the consequences. Heaven or hell, it's your choice. If you want to be saved, you're going to have to make a decision and trust in the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm going to give my life over to you and follow you. Your children or your grandchildren be affected by the decision you make. You see, the choices that we make affects more than just us. If we make the wrong choices, we'll have no one to blame but ourselves. I've dealt with people for many years, and we always want to blame somebody else because of the situation that we're in. But the fact is, if we make the wrong choices, we'll have nobody to blame but ourselves. Amen. I could give you several stories today, if I had time, of people that I talked with and knew that made wrong choices. I know of some that made wrong choices concerning drugs, and they went out and would shoot drugs drugs in their arm and share needles and I've been by the bedside of several that died because of AIDS because they shared needles with someone else. You've got to live with the consequences that you make. I've known of many people that made a choice to start drinking. Do you ever know of anybody that ever planned on becoming an alcoholic when they took their first drink? No. You know of anybody? No, no nobody did. <coughs> But brother, many of us have seen the problems that alcoholism has caused in many families. Yes. The wrinkles is put on mothers and grandmothers' faces. Yes. Amen. We've seen what it's done. But you know, you say, well, it won't happen to me. You don't know that it won't happen to you. Man, I've talked to people that lived out on the streets, accountants. I talked to a a U.S. congressman one time that was in a rescue mission that I preached to. I talked to some people that had plenty of money and they lost it all because of drink. They lost it all. They never, when they took that first drink, thought that would happen to them, but it's their choice. And my friends, you'll have to live with the consequences of your, of your life. Winston Churchill said, there's nothing wrong with a social drink. 
and at least three of his kids died alcoholics. Yes. When I'm telling you this, my friends, there's consequences to our sin, and we'll have nobody to blame but ourselves. Now, God gives us a reason to choose him. It's in our hands, whether life or good or death or evil. But actually, it's up to God whether or not He is going to give us a great life or whether the devil is going to bring terrible things to us. We must realize that it's our choice. We all depend upon God because He's the one that gives us life. Amen. He preserves us, and restores us, and prolongs our life, and sweetens it with comfort. God wants you to have a great life in 2019. Amen. But it's up to you. Amen. It's up to you. <clears throat> Whether or not you do what he says or not to do. All he requires is this. For us to love him. Yes. As we close 2018 and enter a new year, why don't you say, Lord, I want to fall in love with you. And the way you fall in love with God is by reading his word Amen. and walking with him and getting to know him. If you want to have a good life in 2019, a blessed life, then love him and serve him. Find something you can do. There's something you can do. Find it. Amen. Get busy doing something for God. And obey Him. Yes. Read the Scriptures. And when you find out what He wants you to do, obey Him. When the sweet Holy Spirit inside you tugs you and says, this is what I'd like you to do, do it. Amen. We need at least a couple of substitute teachers for our classes. We've got some teachers that, that don't have a substitute. If they get sick or something, we've got to combine the classes. You could do something. You say, well, I don't know how. Well, we could teach you. Yes. You could get in there with a seasoned teacher and she could teach you. But you've got to make your choice of, do you want to serve him or just sit back and do nothing? Amen. Right. If you want God's blessings, then make your mind up that you're going to serve him and then cleave to him and never forsake him. That's right. It's your choice. What 2019 brings for you is up to you. Yes. Moses stands and he says, it's up to you what kind of life you have. Joshua says, choose you this day whom you'll serve. But this is what I close with. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, you can't make your mind up for your wife. Don't worry about her. I'll make that decision. <laughs> you can't make your mind up about your kids. Don't worry about them. I'll make that decision. We will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. And some of you men... Well, we have a lot of mm -hmm. spiritual sissies in our churches today. Amen. Thank God for women that are dedicated to God and serve God. And many of them drag their husbands along because if it wasn't for them, none of the family would be in church. Amen. You're a spiritual sissy. You're still wearing pampers. Take an infamil in a bottle. And you're satisfied with it. Why don't you be a Christian man and stand up and say, Honey, from now on, when the church doors open, we're going to be in church. Amen. Amen. Yes. Just make your mind up. Quit being a slouch. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord, Joshua said. Yes, he did. And that's what we need. We need some men in our church that will stand up and say, We're going to serve God. Amen. We're going to serve. We're going to do what God wants us to do. And guess what? More than likely... Your wife, if she's a Christian wife, will say, Glory to God, this is what I've been waiting for all along. Yes. Glory to God, amen. This is what I've been waiting for all along. A husband that'll be a spiritual husband. Yeah. Honey, man, why don't you start saying, Honey, we're going to start reading the Bible and praying together. Amen. We're going to pray before we eat. Amen. You want God to bless you in 2019? It's up to you. 
<laughs> it's up to you. But now some of you women have got slouches for husbands that are sissies, so you've got to take up the slack. And you know what you got to do? you got to say, well, my husband ain't going to come to church. I'm going to come and I'm going to bring these kids. Amen. I'm going to do like Susanna Wesley and spend some time with those kids and, and spend some time reading the Bible to them and teaching them the Word of God. Amen. And then you can pray for your husband. And hey, you know what I do is get your kids together and tell them, let's pray for your daddy that God will get a hold of him. Yes. yes. If you got a spiritual slouch for a husband. In just a minute, we're going to give an invitation. Some of you in here have never been saved. Some of you kiddos that are back here, that you went to Children's Church, and I guess y'all got out early and you came over here for whatever reason you're here. But you, you talk here. You know, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Amen. Hey, all of y'all that were over in Children's Church, I want you to stand up for just a minute. All of y'all that stand up. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Look at me. Look up here. Look at me. Look up here at me. you got your whole life ahead of you. Whether you want a good life, a blessed life, it's up to you. You live in a time today that wasn't like when we were your age. you got all kinds of things trying to pull you away from God. Yes. But why don't you make your mind up? You say, I've got people in Anchor Bible Baptist Church that love me and care for me. Amen. They try to teach me the Word of God and try to get me to do right. we got a preacher that's not afraid to tell us what's right. But why don't you make your mind up and say, Lord, I want this to be the greatest year of my life. I want your blessings. I want to serve you. I want to be what you want you me to be. There's six boys standing up back there, young men. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every one of them became a preacher, Amen. a missionary, yes. or a deacon, or a song leader? Every one of them could become a great Sunday school teacher for God. Yes. You can. God's got a plan for your life. Yes. Give your life to God. But it's your choice. If you don't live for God, listen to me. Some of you can end up become drunkards or drug addicts. Yeah. You could end up in prison. If you join a gang, you could end up dead. Amen. And if you don't trust in the Lord, you'll end up and go to hell and burn forever and ever and ever. That's right. It's your choice. It's not what God wants. God wants you to have a good life. Yes. Right. A blessed life that influences others. Amen. But it's your choice. You may be seated. It's your choice.